All right. Hello, everybody. It's Vincent Mbata here. I'll be your host uh, for this call. I and I'm not alone. I am with the most beautiful, the most fierce lady, <laughs> Modesta Anderson. Uh, we'll be. Uh, I'll be hosting with her. Uh, you know, we'll be sharing our thoughts, of course. Uh, Mod, do you want to say hello? Hi, everyone. It's so good to see you in 2021. I can see a few faces. I can see we've got Sanele, we've got Ivy, we've got, I can see a few faces there. And I'm very happy that you managed to join us. And I know you're going to take a lot out of this meeting today. So we can get right started. And Vincent, you can just go through the agenda so that everybody knows what we are covering. And then we can start looking at each area one by one. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. So we will be covering, you know, why. Basically, this is the reason you, you know, why you want to do what you want to do or why you want to, you know, uh, make a success out of your life, right? We'll be covering the why and then the decision because it's very important. You know, once you've, once you've uh, come up to your whys, you need to also, you know, take a decision or make a decision. So. Why? Then taking action, of course, who, how, uh, we're gonna get into, you know, we're gonna be very practical here as well. So it's not just theory and something that you hear every day, but we're gonna give you like real practical examples. Uh, that's basically, that's mainly the who and the how, uh, and then the importance of follow-up as well. Um, how to handle rejection? I know most people, most people, especially starting out, you know, this is a very sensitive uh, topic. Yeah. <laughs> How to handle rejection uh, and the power of consistency. Okay, so we're going to cover those those um, those points, but there will be like kind of extra pointers that will be going uh, that we'll be covering as well. And uh, the other thing too is this is going to be as informal as possible. I mean, we really want to give you value. Uh, we want you to walk away with a lot of you know notes if you if you uh, if you can take notes and uh, you know just to just to give you value and basically the stuff that we go through every single day you know um like real practical stuff and and our experiences basically because as you'll realize mod is i mean she's she's very successful in in her own way right like she she has a different approach like we we don't you know we have different approaches okay but I mean, it, it, my approach works for me and hers works for her as well. <laughs> That's why we, we are today. Uh, so you will learn and kind of relate, you know, and um, yeah, see which one works better for you. And then, and uh, obviously add a little spin to it. And uh, yeah, you know, just to make it work for yourself as well. So uh, let's basically, yeah, let's kick off. So the why part of this, uh, look, I went, full-time online 20, 2017, right? I quit my job. I was in the army, right? And um, yeah, so I quit my job basically 2016, uh, you know, to do this full-time. But it wasn't until, you know, until 2016 when I, you know, when I quit that I had been hearing the why, why, why. And because we hear it, you know, we hear it a lot. So we tend to really, it becomes like a cliche and it, it's, you know, then it doesn't have the same impact as it actually should. So, you know, and what happens is you, you want specific results or you want certain results and certain outcomes, right? And you keep hearing your why, your why, your why, but you don't take that into account. So you don't take it seriously or you don't, really focus on that but you want the outcome and then you know i realized um that actually it starts with your why you know it starts like on the inside right and then your results will manifest and then whatever you you wish for whatever you want will then start to happen but because we hear it over and over it starts losing uh, you know, it starts losing its meaning and you, you take it for granted, but it's very important, you know, your why. So when that occurred to me, when I eventually got it, you know, then that's when, you know, things changed for me. 
And that's when I also, you know, decided to quit, uh, to leave my job and, you know, to venture in this, uh, into this space, which at the time, I mean, I wasn't really foreign to it, but I wasn't sure what to expect. I mean, coming from like really a secured full-time job kind of thing uh, to a really like a complete environment where I depend on myself, you know, to put bread on the table. So it was a, it was a mind, you know, like a mind shift, right? But it didn't happen overnight. Like I said, I kept hearing the why, 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 and then eventually it clicked. So, um, so the 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 reason that went with that, and this still drives me today, right? Is look, I have a I have a family, married with with two kids, right? Uh, obviously, they totally you know dependent. Uh, they depend on me to provide. Okay. Um, I have a family. I have also an extended family where my mom doesn't work. She hasn't worked for a very long time. As long as, look, I think uh, high school, probably like early days of high school, um, you know, that she hasn't really had a, you know, like a really stable kind of employment, you know. Um, so she, she relies on me. And I have, I have nephews that depend on me. You know, she, she, she stays with them. Right, I stay in Cape Town and they stay in in Joburg. Right, um, I have you know a sister as well, two sisters at this stage. Right, um, now due to COVID, you know they're not working. You know they don't work anymore. Uh, so they, especially my my um, say the middle sister, she relies on me. You know the elder one, obviously she has she's married, has her own family, etc. But my other sister stays with my mom the two nephews, no other income, they all depend on me, right? I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. So those, you know, those, those things and those factors and those, uh, the, that's the, you know, that's why, that's my why, that's why I need to make this a success. That's why I need to, you know, push myself every single day to reach higher heights, you know, go, go further, you know, push myself even if I don't feel like it, because I'm only human, right? Uh, but this is very important to me. And this is also the reason, even after, you know, I've been scammed before, I'm sure more than 80% of, of, of the attendees here today have been scammed before. If you've been online and you've been trying out, you know, different platforms, different things, I'm sure you've been scammed before, <laughs> you know? I've been trying out this online stuff since 2011, right? Uh, but obviously I was doing it part-time at the time uh, until like I just said, I quit my job 2016. But I've been online since since 2011 and trying out different things. And I got scammed myself, <laughs> you know, more than twice. Uh, but because my why is bigger than like temporary failures or, you know, uh, like programs not working out or this, you know, these obstacles that you come across along the way, my why is much bigger than that. So that's why you need to connect with your why, because that will drive you, that will propel you, you know, through uh, even hard times, because your why is stronger. So that's what keeps me going. And obviously, the lifestyle that I desire, you know, now this goes beyond what I'm able to provide for my family, but also the ideal kind of lifestyle that I, you know, that I want for myself and for my, you know, for my family, which is, you know, not having to work, right? No nine to five, being your own boss, okay? Being financially independent, doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, with whomever you want to do it. So that's, that's, that's freedom basically. So that's the kind of lifestyle that I aspire to. That's the kind of lifestyle that, you know, when I decided to leave my job in 2016, that, that was now the aim. Okay. I can go into a lot of details, but we don't have, we don't have a lot of time in terms of, you know, how to actually like make sure you, you know, start to the end in mind and have goals, all of it. So I won't go into that, but basically this, this is my why. Okay. I have people that depend on me and I will make it work. It doesn't matter the obstacles and it doesn't matter the failures, but because of my why, again, it's, it's stronger and it's bigger. Uh, 
bigger than all of it. That's why I actually do what I do. And, you know, and, and it's, it's been working for me. And uh, with Maud, it's the same thing. So Maud, just share, just share your thoughts there uh, with everybody. Modesta, you there? Oh uh, yeah, she she did say obviously that she's having, you know, load shedding that side. Modesta, okay, I don't want to jump to the next uh, topic without us hearing from Modesta because we're trying to structure this as well. So, so you know exactly where we are, right? Uh, okay, I think she's trying to reconnect. Uh, let's give her a few, few minutes. She's trying to reconnect. She's offline now, so, and then we'll we'll basically take it from there. So this is this is also a little, you know, uh, for you guys is to really like after the call or when you get some quiet time to really ponder like deeply you know and ask yourself why do you want to succeed why did you join cfx like like why do you want to make this work i'm telling you like what you will get from that little you know from that time that you're spending that's that will save you like for a very long time for the rest of your life that that will actually you know that will that will save you uh and you see the the obstacles that you you perceive to be you know unsurmountable at this stage then it will be a breeze you know because you know what exactly you want and why you want to why you want that and especially with this uh you know pandemic that we're facing right now now more than ever you need to really like reconnect and just tune in with you know inside yourself and you know really just like you know, you know, like make, you know, make that decision uh, and just decide why you want to, to be successful. And, and, uh, and again, success is, su success depends. It, there's no one definition, like no single definition of success, right? It just, uh, it's, it's personal, you know, it's personal. Some people, you know, we all want different things in life, but the main thing is, I mean, your definition of success, are you living it right now, you know? So, and I believe at some point we all want the same things. You know, we want to be happy. We want to really be free, do what you want to do whenever you want to do it. You know, so at some stage it becomes kind of like the same things that we want in life, right? And then obviously some want uh, uh, more things than others, okay? so. Modesta, are you back? Modesta? Okay, just bear with us there, guys. Um, Modesta. I'm there. I'm here. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. So, yeah. So let's hear from you. Let's hear from you then. Why do you do what you do? All right. So for me, a lot of you know where I am. I'm based in South Africa currently, but I'm originally from Zimbabwe. And my background is in travel. I was a travel consultant for almost 15 years, travel department. And I was there for three years to quit, mostly because I was really not happy in that job. But it's because I could see that I needed more out of life. I mean, guys, there has to be more to life than waking up every day, going to an office at five o'clock, you go home and you are going through the same routine over and over and over and time is moving. When I was growing up, I had a big dream. My dream was to travel around the world. That is what I've always wanted to do. This is why I went into the travel industry because I thought, look, as a travel consultant, I'm going to go wherever I want to go whenever. But that didn't happen when I was working because I was literally stuck behind a desk. 
So I started doing network marketing in 2009. I've been doing this for a very long time. To 2010, I went overseas. I went to the States for training, which really opened up my mind. And you know, once your mind has been opened up, once your mind has been stretched, you can go back to who you were or where you were. So for me, when I left work in 2017, I really wanted to look for something that could work for me. And for two years, I went round and round in circles. I would lose money, I would invest. And I've been with Vincent for a while. We work on something, it wouldn't work out. Until CashFX came along, I'll be honest with you, I hadn't really made money online. So when CashFX came, I really sat down and I noticed how huge this business was going to be. And I needed to really sit back and dig deep for me, I needed to reconnect with my why all over again. At some point, I was close to giving up. I was close to losing hope. So it needed a lot of soul searching for me when Cash FX came in in 2019. So it's your why. For me, my why is about what drives me, what motivates me, what do I want to achieve, what do I want for my family, and most importantly, what do I want for the team members that are joining our team. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about me, it's about everybody else. So for me, really, it's about financial independence. You know, I hear people saying this all the time, money is not important, there are far more important things than money. But guys, let's be honest, everything starts with the money. Whatever you want to do in life, it starts with you having the money. So this whole thing of money is not important. No, 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 no. I, I knew someone before who told me that, you know, Modesta, you keep saying this is because you haven't had the money. This is why you think it's not important. You are just trying to make yourself feel better. And now I can look back and understand where this person was coming from. At the time when this guy said it, I felt very offended. I thought, what, what is he trying to say? But now when I look back, it actually makes sense. So for me, financial independence is very important because if you look at your health, you can have bad health. And if you don't have money, guess what? It's going to be even worse. So it has to start with you getting financially independent. This is very important to me. I've also got family back home that are totally relying on me. So I've got my dad, my mom is late, unfortunately, but I've got my dad who's quite old. He retired years ago. He relies on me. So I look after my family back home. I look after my son who's in college. I'm a single parent. I look after my son who's in college. So money is really central to all those things, to my why. But most importantly, I've realized that, you know what? Time is moving. Time doesn't wait for anybody. And I've had this dream for years and I'm not getting any younger. And what I want to do, I can actually do it now. And sadly with COVID, we all are stuck inside the houses. We can't travel. But finally, I can honestly say I'm in a place financially where I can actually start planning my life. I can go into real estate. I've always wanted to go into real estate. I would like to believe every single one of us, everyone who's on the call, right now you don't want to pay rent forever every single one of us needs to own a property so that's my other why as well so that is what really drives me i want to go into real estate i want to be able to travel whenever i want to travel i want to pick up my bags and go wherever i want to go at any time i don't want money to ever be an issue for me, I don't want money to ever be an issue. And when I talk to people about cash FX and when I share this opportunity, this is what I really want for everybody, financial independence, the freedom to do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it, and not having to beg from your boss for time off because you want to go and visit your mother who could be in another country or in another town. So for me, this is very important. It's really what drives me. So, and because this is my main source of income, I'm very passionate about the business. Yeah. For me, this is my main source of income. So I hopefully it resonates with somebody. Over to you, Vincent. No, oh, that's 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 awesome. And you know, here's the here's the here's another thing. Here's another thing. I know whenever we talk 
being an entrepreneur, being your own boss, etc. It sounds it sounds great and fantastic, right? But the reality is, and I've also, you know, I had to also real like I realized this, and I had to, you know, it was a it was kind of a wake up. Not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Let's you know just put that out there. Not everybody wants to be their own boss. I, I've, I've, like I said, I've learned this along the way, but I can tell you, everyone wants to be financially free. So, you know, I mean, when I had a job, I wasn't earning enough, you know, and I was in, I was in debt. Like I was earning, look, it was, you know, it was not enough, and I was just living on overdraft. So when I get paid, it goes into my overdraft. I use that again. And in three days, I'm, I'm broke, right? So look, um, you might have a, you might have a, a, a decent job and you might be happy with your job. Like I said, you might not really want to be an entrepreneur and do these, you know, big things or whatever, but you just want to have some relief, like, you know, financial, financial relief, like have enough, right, to do whatever else that you want to do, you know, over and above your salary. Some people are really happy with that job. So when we say doing what you want and living the life you want, we're not really saying now you must quit your job and you must do this. That's what, that's the, that's what we chose. That's what we decided to do. So, um, because, you know, I mean, seriously, you, especially during now with, you know, this time now with the pandemic, you need, it's a need, it's not a want, you need a second source of income. You know, it's now it's no longer a luxury, but it's a, it's a necessity to have a second source of income. And that's where CFX, you know, comes in as well. Um, cause I mean, living, from paycheck to paycheck, uh, that was that was me. And I mean, third day down the line, we used to get paid on the 15th. The 20th, I'm already broke, looking forward to the next 15th. I mean, that kind of life, it's like you're just living to pay the bills and the money comes in, you're broke again in three days, you, you know, and there's more to life than just living to pay the bills, you know? Uh, so, but even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, for example, but I believe that you want some form of financial freedom, whatever that is to you, okay? So that's, that's what you need to connect with first, okay? So this is what leads, yeah, so this leads us basically to the next uh, topic, which is decision. So, you know, when I, you know, when I, you know, connected with my why and really, you know, came to terms with where I was uh, financially. And uh, like I said, I wasn't necessarily like devastated at my job as such. Obviously I was not happy with, the, with some things, but I wasn't really devastated, but it wasn't enough for me to just keep going. And I wanted more in life, right? So then I, you know, after I reconnected with my wife, then I had to make a decision. That's the most important part. Then you know, I made a decision to leave my work and I made a decision to be an entrepreneur. I made a decision to do network marketing. This is very important. And, you know, until you decide to, you know, I'm reminded of Eric Worre, which I'll tell you about him as well. Um, he, he, this is his famous uh, phrase. He, he likes saying, uh, you must decide to be a network marketing professional, <laughs> you know, until you decide uh, you'll keep bouncing off doing this and that and really, you know, you'll end up nowhere, really. You have to decide that this is what you want to do. Uh, you have to decide that you want the kind of life that you want for your family. You have to decide that you want to break free from debt, be financially independent, be, you know, you have to decide. Recognizing those things is one one thing, right? It's one step. The next step, you make a decision and then you stick to it, okay? So we'll give you some practical examples as well as to like how to go about it. But that's another, that's the second, you know, important step. And then once you decide, you know, what it is that you want to do, again, it will help you stay the course. It will help you, you know, uh, focus. It will help you, you know, reach the, the, you know, the next level. If you know what you want. You know, what do you think, Maud? That's, that's very important. You know, I was actually thinking while you are talking, this whole issue of a decision, a lot of people underestimate it. I meet people who come in and I show them cash effects and they rush 
you know, I've actually got people that I say, hang on, wait, you need to really decide you are rushing if you thought about this, because before someone has even got, gone through the information that I've sent, I can tell because if I send someone information and three hours later, they come back and they say, tell me I want to sign up. I always have doubts that that person has made the decision. You are acting on impulse. You have not made the decision. So making a decision is a conscious thing that you have to do to actually say, okay, this is what I have in front of me. I want to do this. I really want to do this. And you, it's a choice, guys. It's actually a choice. And you have to decide that I am going to succeed. It's all very well just deciding to put in $300 in the system. But if you actually made a decision that you are going to succeed as well, because I'll tell you now, if it's not inside you, if you haven't internalized it, that you actually want to succeed, guess what? It's not going to happen. It is definitely not going to happen. And I'm going to give you an example. I was watching this movie the other day and this couple was really struggling in their marriage and they went for counseling. How they managed to save their marriage is at one point they looked at each other and they said, but hang on, do you remember our vows, our wedding, our wedding vows? We said we, are, we choose to love each other no matter what. Even when you are irritating me, even when you are annoying me, even when I don't like you this particular day, but I'm choosing to love you anyway, because that is the pact that we made when we got married. And that is how they managed to save their marriage. Why am I talking about this? Because your decision is what will keep you going, even when things are rough. Look, reality is you're going to meet a lot of people who are going to look at you and say no. So when those people say no to the business opportunity, what is going to keep you going? You have to reconnect with your decision. You chose to succeed. You made the decision that no matter what, you are going to succeed in this business. That is what will keep you going. That is what keeps me going anyway. Yeah. So yeah. That, yeah, that's. Over to you, Vincent. No, that's that's true, Mod. I mean, because we. I mean, uh, down the line, I mean, uh, the, the sixth points that we'll cover is how do you handle rejection, right? So we still wanna, you know, we'll cover that as well as to, yes, you've made a decision, but it's not really easy, uh, you know, how do I go about it, right? So we, we'll, we'll get to that. But if you don't believe that you can do what it is that you want to do, you, it, it, won't, it won't happen, right? Yes, you. We we're talking about decision, but decision goes in goes hand in hand with belief. Your belief system matters. You know, you can, uh, you know, decide. Okay, I want to be an entrepreneur as well. I want to succeed in CFX. You know, just a kind of you know something that's closer to home, which is also why we here. Uh, I want to succeed in CFX. Okay, awesome. But do you really believe that you can succeed? <laughs> you know that's another thing because you find it's you know people you know it's easy to say oh, i've made it easy enough decided but if you don't really believe it and this is something that's why i said earlier it starts on the inside like it starts within you if you don't believe that you can and you will succeed you want like simply it will show in how you present the business it will show in your posture it will you know there's something about energy that we you know, I don't understand myself. Maud doesn't understand it, but um, it's something that God created, I believe. Uh, people can tell, you know, somehow your energy, you know, people can connect with that and they can tell if you actually believe in what you, you're saying or in what you, the business that you're presenting or whatever, right? So it's also very important that what, you know, after making a decision, you have to really believe that it is possible that yes, I can make network marketing work. I can and I will make CFX work. You know, it will be a vehicle uh, for, you know, uh, for my financial independence, et cetera, right? Again, which is now the taking action part, right? You've made a decision, you connected with your why, you made a decision, and then now you obviously have to put that decision in action. You have to take action. If you don't, if you don't take action, nothing will happen. I can tell you that now. There is a saying. 
um, I can't remember who said it, uh, but it, it goes knowing uh, to know and not yet to do is not to know. <laughs> so you, you must do, okay? If you say you know, but your actions are different, you are the same as a person who doesn't know, okay? You must put your, your, your action or you must put your decision into action uh, in this case. So here's the thing. I started with $500 uh, when my sponsor showed me, uh, introduced CFX to me in 2019, July. You know, I made a decision to use CFX as my uh, vehicle you know, to my uh, financial independence. Cause like Mort said, before that, yes, I was trying different things, but I hadn't really, really kind of made, you know, like I would say in a kind of you know, normal person standard, I hadn't really made a, a killing or a lot, right? I didn't really make, I was, yes, I was just getting by, but not thriving as such, I was just surviving. Um, and then when my sponsor, uh, introduced me to CFX, and then I decided to, you know, use CFX now as the vehicle to get me there. So I took action. That's now the next step. I bought a five hundred dollar package. That's you know that's really that's what I had at the time. That's I would have started with much more because I saw the opportunity, right? So I only had five hundred dollars. I uh, then I I took action. I went in, and you know the rest is basically history i moved up very quickly you know that uh, you know looking back it's uh, yeah it's it's really to me it's it's fantastic and and amazing in a, in a sense that you know it it happened so quickly it was also because i had decided to just focus on cfx and whatever action i was doing and taking it was just mainly based on you know putting cfx out there you know telling as many people as I could about this wonderful opportunity. Within, look, um, I started with $500 and then within two days, I went to a thousand dollar package. Within three days after that, I went to the $2,000 pack. And then it took me nine days uh, to go to 5K. At the time, we didn't even have a $3,000 pack, right? It took me like nine days to go to the $5,000 package. and it took me a month and a half to go to the $10,000 pack. And then after that, it was basically like two months, two months, two months, you know, upgrading to the next pack and the next level, the next level. And in 20, I mean, most of you know my story, 20, um, 20 July, I was now in the position to buy my car, my dream car, cash, right? Uh, 850,000 rand. Um, that's that's slightly over fifty thousand dollars, right? And I bought it cash within basically twelve months of really focusing and taking action every single day. And I was, uh, I think twenty, I think in July I was in, I think I think fifty thousand dollar package or seventy thousand dollar package somewhere there. But here's here's what's amazing to me, right? That little that little action, you know that I took with that $500, <laughs> it has since generated like a lot of income, like, a, you know, quite, quite a decent amount, okay? But not only that, not just for me, my, I was able to, to, to put my wife in, okay? I was able to buy a package for my wife, who is also now on the 100K pack and, um, you know, she quit her job in 2019, uh, 2020 last year, uh, in May last year. She also quit her job. Uh, she's on 100K pack now. And uh, I mean, we also bought a new car for her as well. Um, October, I think it was. Just like three months, you know, that's the three months uh, gap between my buying my dream car and buying a new car for her as well, right? Uh, that was like a three month, uh, three month gap. So. And not only that, guys, um, my, like I said earlier, but my mom, my extended family, she's now on a, my mom, she's now on a 10K pack, right? Uh, looking to upgrade her to 15K very soon. And my sisters have their own pack as well. Like I bought packages for them as well. And my cousins, 
and you know I can go on and on. My my friends as well, you know one of my one one of my friends as well, uh, you know because it's not only about me, guys. I also really look to help other people because I know uh, where I was and the the difficulties I was going through at the time. Uh, so I I endeavor to help other people as well, you know. Um, so all of that it was just from a single $500 and all of these things have happened in a short space of time in like 18, 17 or 18 months now since CFX has been in operation. So do not, you know, don't take it for granted. Don't take, you know, taking action for granted. It matters. That's what will actually determine your success or failure. You just have to take action. If you don't, nothing happens. There's people I told about CFX in 2020, no, 2019 told about CFX, they never took action. You know, they thought, oh no, okay, yeah. You know, the normal stories that you get, right? They never took action. Uh, so that's, you know, the difference. And obviously some of them came back last year and are now happy uh, CFX members. But the, you know, the beauty of taking action is you move a step closer to your dream every single day. So Maud, let me hand over to you uh, to share your view. Your... Thanks, Vincent. Um, you covered quite a lot there, and I just wanted to stress on the taking action. So for me, when Vincent, Vincent is my sponsor, as you all know, I work very closely with Vincent. When Vincent approached me about cash effects, I was in a bad space financially. Do you remember, Vincent? It was bad. So for me, I didn't have the luxury of wasting time thinking about it. Yeah, I, did. I didn't have the luxury of wasting time thinking about it. I needed to get involved and I needed to move quickly, not, not joking at all. So I could only afford a $300 package. I got started with that. And guys, when I say this, I mean it. I was down and out. So CashFX would literally be paying for my rent as well. So for me to move packages, I couldn't move as fast as Vincent moved because I had a lot of responsibilities. Vincent, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, so I had a lot of responsibilities, so I couldn't move quite as fast as Vincent did. But what I believed is in, I needed to take daily action. Because when we are talking of taking action, I know people who approach people to join CashFX today, and they take a break for seven days a week, they are quiet, and then they suddenly think, oh, I need to talk about cash effects. When we talk of taking action, we are talking of daily action. That is what it means for me. So when I started, I started talking to people every single day, I would be talking to at least minimum three people every single day. So I managed to move up. Eventually I upgraded my package. I went to 500, I went to, a thousand, I went to 2000. Currently I'm sitting on a 70,000 pack. So I've also got my son in the business. He's got his own package. I also put in my nephew, my late sister's son into the business. He doesn't know he's got a business that is running. He's got a 10,000 package right now. He has no clue. It's something that I want to give him as a gift when he's now on a 50,000 dollar package, then I can say to him, listen, if you don't want to work anymore because you're always complaining about your job, here is a $50,000 package that you can literally take over and you don't have to go to the office. You don't have to work anymore because this child is always struggling. He's always complaining about his job. So I've got a surprise package that I'm building for him quietly. So as Vincent was saying, when you start taking action, you find that you've also got people in your circle that need your help, that rely on you. So instead of giving them money, because guys, look, it's all very well giving someone money every month. But I believe in teaching someone to fish rather than giving them the fish every single day. So you'd rather open up packages for other people. This, this is what I've done. And it's a deliberate thing. This taking action is a deliberate thing. You need to actually sit down and say, this is what I'm doing. And you need to be conscious of what you are doing on a daily basis. So yeah, for now, I'm, I am extremely happy with CashFX. I have achieved far more than I thought possible. I'm actually looking for a home to buy. 
And when I buy that home, I'm not going to go to the bank. It's a home that I'm going to pay for cash. That is actually the plan for this year. And all this I've managed from a startup capital of $300. What else, which other business can you start with $300? And in a space of 18 months, you are planning to buy a house cash. So this thing of taking action, a lot of people take it for granted, as Vincent was saying. I've got people that I approached about cash effects my very first month of joining. And you know, some people are only now approaching me. I've got a guy who approached me, Vincent, three days ago. I had even forgotten about him. He was one of the first people that I shared cash effects with. And he just kept quiet. And I kept going back to him until I realized, mm -mm, you are now being a pest, leave this person alone. And he came to me three days ago to say, Modesta, are you still on cash effects? And I said, dude, this business has taken me from the lowest point of my life to where I am today. I am still with CashFX. We are very happy with CashFX and he's only signing up now. He's actually waiting to get paid end of the month so that he can sign up. So imagine if he had taken action when I approached him 18 months ago, where would he be now? Think about it. So this whole thing of taking action is a It's a matter of timing. Timing is very important. Don't sit on an idea at my business until you see that other people are being successful. Start where you are and build your own success from, what, from your own circumstances. It means so much more after that. Vincent, I'll hand over to you there. Oh. I think we can move on to the who. The who, you can just introduce it there, Maud. Please. Yeah, because you see, I, when I was talking of action, I was already touching off who. So when I start on the who, I want to be very honest and I want to be very blunt. Your people connection matters. Your people connection matters. Who have you surrounded yourself with? I always say this to people and other people think I'm being rude, but there are certain people who don't deserve to be part of your circle. There are certain people who don't deserve to be in your life on one reason. They are not building you up. Because I see so many people struggling to build. When you are struggling to build your business, take a look at your people connection. Who is in your circle? Who are the people that you say they are your friends? So for me, I'll tell you what I did when I started on CashFX. For me, the training that I got, Vincent loves Eric Worre. Vincent is a huge follower of Eric Worre. I have met Eric Worre in person. And one thing that I took from him, people think I'm old fashioned when I say this and I am very old fashioned. I stick to this and it works for me. When I started on CashFX, what I did is I literally took my phone. I went through all my contacts and I had a notebook with me. And I would literally be writing down all the names of the people that I thought, okay, so-and-so could be interested. So-and-so could be interested. And when you're doing your list, don't look at people's circumstances. This is the mistake that we make, all of us. You look at someone and you think, okay, my friend John is comfortable. He's got a good job. He's driving a nice car. He's got his own house. He's not renting. So. Nah, he won't be interested in cash effects. This is not for him. Do not make that judgment on behalf of people because guess what? People's circumstances can change overnight. Approach people as they come. Don't look at people and prejudge anybody. So this is what I did. I wrote a long list of people and I literally started contacting them one by one. And when I'm doing this list, when I'm contacting people, I talk to someone, I tick them off. I give them the information. I literally have their names in rows. So I've got a row which says, have I given them the information? Have I made a follow-up on that person? How many times have I followed up? So I give them a time frame. Yes, like I can give you information oh. today. Two days later, I'm coming yes, to I'm you. Know, I'm I'm you. Uh, have you, you gone through this information? Uh, Vincent, please. Okay, I just muted him. Sorry about that. If you put that person on, okay. Yeah, I just muted him. Yeah. 
So you go through your list. I write down my list. I make follow-ups because it's also very important. So who you know comes, this is where it matters. So when I'm talking of phone contacts, phone contacts includes everybody, right? You've got your friends, you've got your family, you've got your work colleagues for those people who are still working. So you are literally talking to everyone. Everyone, give everyone a chance. Give everyone a chance. So this is how I build my business. I never miss an opportunity to talk about my business. I never miss an opportunity to share my business. You know, some people, it's only now the world we are living in is so unfriendly. You can't really communicate with people face to face. You can't really go to the supermarkets now and start getting all friendly with people because no one wants people in their space anymore. But before, when I go to the supermarket, when you're waiting in a queue, when people are talking about the weather, if you so much as look in my direction, and start chatting me up. I will not miss the opportunity to tell you about what I do. This is, this is what I do. When I go to the doctor, when I'm sitting in a queue and someone is being super friendly and they want to chat me up and they want my phone number, guess what, with my reflexologist. And she said to me, you know, she made a comment. She said, you know, every time you come here, you're never in a rush. You're not like other people who rush me and they say, listen, I need to go back. I've got a meeting. I'm going to the office. What exactly is it that you do that gives you so much time? And I told her, I do network marketing. Next thing, she wanted information. She's signing up this coming week. We've got a meeting where I'm helping her to sign up. So talk to people about your business any way that you go. I'll hand over to you, Vincent. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true, Mott. That's absolutely true. And you know, when I yeah, I think I've covered everything on the way. Yeah, with the who just a little bit uh, from my side is when I started, I I, I mentioned that Mod and I use different approaches, but they both work, you know. So like with her, she you know, she she talks openly, yeah, like she just said, you know, um, like to everyone basically right uh even offline so for me i'm more of an online guy like i don't i don't really talk to people a lot in in public you know yes i'm easy to talk to but about my business unless somebody really really asks but i want to really like now you know start to to talk about it i know barry i'm not sure if, i'm not sure if barry is on the call because he's also uh you know it's very easy uh to just grab somebody you know, at the mall or wherever and just <laughs> start sharing. But with me, I'm more online. So what you want to do, like Maud mentioned the, you know, who you surround yourself with. Just like when it comes to you, firstly, you have to brand yourself, right? You have to brand yourself. And now when it comes to your connections, start with social media. We're going to get to the how, obviously, after this. With social media and then you you know, you, you brand yourself and you unfriend the people that do not add value into your life and the people that you're not, you know, not on the same page with, right? Um, before I, I dwell uh, more into that, I want to just tell you about this book. This is what Modesto was talking about now with um, Eric Worre. This book is about Eric Worre. Uh, it's uh, GoPro. It's called GoPro. Make sure you get this book. It will tell you, you know, it's it'll teach you basically whatever like everything you you need to know uh, regarding network marketing okay i've read this book at least twice now and like all the questions like the follow follow up uh, finding prospects inviting prospects you know you're like helping your new distributor get started promoting events like all those things are here Maud said she was more you know traditional etc it's because basics basics uh, work. You just stick to basics and it works. So this book covers exactly that, you know, what to say and how to say it and how to, you know, conduct yourself and all of that. Um, I'm, I'm now getting into the how part, right? I'm getting to the how part now as well. Um, get this book by Fraser Brooks. You know, if you can just get these two books, you know, I don't want to be listing a lot of things here and then people start coming up with all sorts of excuses like I don't have time, I don't have, look, we all have time. If it's important to you, 
you will make time, okay? So, and this is not a lot. Uh, it's just, it's, uh, it's Eric Worry, okay? GoPro, you learn a lot here. And this is mainly social media, it's, it's I dare you. It's mainly, focuses mainly on, on Facebook, all right? Which goes hand in hand with what I'm saying now. What you want to do basically like, you know, with your Facebook, because I understand like a guy like myself, I'm, you know, 99% of the time I'm at home. I mean, the people that uh, my business partners here and the people that joined me, you will know that we met online, even Modesta, <laughs> we met online, right? But you want to brand yourself. You want to make, you want to make sure your Facebook profile is professional, right? Remove all the, you know, all the things that do not contribute to your, to your, you know, to your business and, um, you know, and then the topics that you talk about, like, you know, politics and all the things that. So you want to uh, make sure that you, you bring yourself to your, your Facebook profile. I'm really going to talk about Facebook because look, we don't have enough time. And also, I'm not going to talk about Want to, if you want the book, just get a copy. Uh, uh, you know, it'll end. So, <laughs> business with like minded. Uh, Mod, could you mute this person, please? I'm trying to mute, but I'm actually failing to see where I can mute people. Sorry. Okay, let me just look. Um, okay, I just muted them. All right. So, okay, the author of I Dare You is Fraser Brooks. Fraser Brooks. That's the guy that's more like Facebook and he's, he's very good. Uh, so here's the thing. On Facebook, you obviously, you know, like a guy like myself who's always online, right? The people that I bring into the, like the circle. You're welcome, uh, Time Never, is... I mean, you want to work with people that are like-minded, you know, people that are in the, you know, you like the same things, you are, you know, you business-minded, you open, you know, to opportunities, you know, like-minded individuals, the people that are not unfriend, obviously, unless it's like a close family member or a friend or whatever, right, but uh, it's basically just aligning yourself with the people that are in the same mission as you, or on the same mission as you, uh, and that is, you know, like being like-minded, open-minded, business-minded people. So you want to be friends with those people. You surround yourself with those people. And then you do that, guess what? Your business will start to grow, okay? Your, your network will start to grow as well. You know, like all the people that I know now, I'm seeing Kathy. I'm not sure if it's Catherine Moyo. Um, it's all the people that I met online. With me, look, like I said, 99%, it's really online. So that's what you need to do. One, another thing before we move on is people take network marketing for granted that just because you can talk doesn't necessarily mean you can be an effective recruiter. You have to, this is a skill, just like you would go to school to learn, you know, like engineering, uh, uh, becoming a doctor or lawyer. Network marketing is a skill. There's certain things that, you know, you need to do or need to say and, and, you know, a certain posture that you, you know, you need to be a professional. That basically just sums it up. You need to be a professional in your, in what you do. I mean, you wouldn't go to a doctor that doesn't really know, you know, that, <laughs> that doesn't really know his job, would you? Because you're obviously risking your, your life and health. So you would go to a, a professional uh you know, doctor that knows what they're doing. So that's the posture you need to, to assume. And, you know, and there's certain things that you need to say and that you do not need to say. And, uh, you know, all of those things, you know, because people get surprised when they try to talk to somebody and they immediately get rejected. It's really your posture and how you present the opportunity. Like I, I can go on and on guys, but just know that network marketing is a skill, right? You have to, at like learn the skill. And this is not an overnight thing. It's little steps, like we, we spoke about action, little steps every day uh, to really, you know, get you to where you want to be. Even myself, I'm still learning, 
okay so and this is what you'll also learn in these books so Maud, you want to add something on the on the how there like how do you go about your business Modesta. Mod. I think she's dropped off. Um, while we're waiting for her to come back, Vincent, I've been waiting for an exit for the past six weeks and nothing I've written, gotten a ticket number, and I was advised to come to this platform to be advised on how to escalate withdrawal. Um, I put in a thousand and I accepted the 20% uh, withhold because they took the 300, which I went in eyes wide open. I understand the game. And I just want to pull out and a couple of people below me also want to pull out and that has not been happening. So I joined today um, to get direction as to how I get my 700 back less the 20% uh, exit uh, fee. So that's, if you can direct me, please, that would be quite helpful. Okay, have you spoken to your sponsor? You have? Yes, they directed me to this platform. I even got uh, confirmation from the support and the ticket because they you're supposed to put a request through electronically, which I did. And I've got the email um, which I can share. Okay, um, okay that's fine. Um, what's, what's your name again? I'm just saying Oxford. But what, uh, it, what yeah, you, sorry, go ahead. Um, there was a uh, bit of a delay. Send me a private message on WhatsApp and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay, sorry. What's, um, uh, what's the WhatsApp? Just ask your sponsor. They would probably know or just look for me on the group and then send me a message there. And then, yeah, we'll take it. Sorry, from. look for you where? Uh, look on WhatsApp or ask your sponsor. They would probably know. And then we can take it from there. Um, no, they, they've also just got the group, uh, but I'm not in the group. Okay, but um, you will get my contact um, on WhatsApp. Ask anybody. Uh, no, but I'm asking you now, is it uh, a problem to get that contact now, please? Sorry. Not a problem, it's just not what we focused on right now. That's yeah, the... but I'm not asking you to take the whole meeting. This is, I if you can. You, I can send you the same WhatsApp. Just contact me, okay? My name okay. here is Jesus. Let is, me know can it be put in the, in the chat? Is it possible? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Um, uh, you said your name was? It's Miriam. Miriam, okay, awesome, all right. So then we'll we'll talk on, on WhatsApp. So, um, Modesta, you back? Modesta? Okay, uh, I think Mod is having connection problems. So, okay, uh, look, now another thing on the how, right? There's, you, you get two types of markets. You get a warm market and you get a cold market. Warm market, that's your friends, okay? Friends, family, you know, close close members. That's, that's, that's a warm market. And usually these are the people we default to that we, you know, it's, it's the go-to people when we are looking to, you know, uh, to build a business, right? So this, these are usually the people that we, we go to, but you don't always get maximum results from there because, you know, it's people that know you, they know your, your lifestyle, they know your finances, most, some of them, okay? So some people, you know, have success here when they, you know, talk to the warm market, but most people don't. You know, my, my network is really, it's really like 99%, like I said, uh, it's, I built my relationships online, like all the people, even Modesta, it's, it's online, you know, Meta online, Lucia, uh, like everybody, you know, um, and that's, that's basically through what we, we are talking about through, you know, you positioning yourself and, 
know, changing how you present yourself on, on social media, not just Facebook, even on WhatsApp. You know, I just want more to say something because I see she's back and then I'll tell you what I do as well like on WhatsApp and, and Facebook and all of that. And some of you will be familiar with that because that's how you came uh, to contact me, okay? Uh, Modesta, I see you back. Mod. Modesta. Hello, Charity, great to have you. Okay, let me try for Maud again. She's having connection problems. Okay, look, until Maud is sorted out, I'll just tell you what it is that I do. And you know, you can do the same thing, right? Um, like I said, my Facebook, I make sure it looks professional and I don't discuss, you know, politics or anything controversial, really. Like I said, you know, my, my uh, network is really uh, people, you know, like-minded individuals and i'm more i'm an entrepreneur i'm more into business uh, personal development as well so that's what i do and that's what i attract so it's so it becomes easy for me when i kind of share an opportunity because those people are, are, are you know they they look for those so they they jump they jump on board okay and then i use stories a lot I use stories, I use you see that I have communicated with before that came to me uh, through Facebook. Now this is this is what this is what this is my strategy, guys. And I mean I want to share as much as I can with you. Um because I want people to, you know, I want my prospects to to see what I'm doing on a daily basis. This is actually going to lead us to the importance of following up. Uh, I use, if you, if a person contacts me on Facebook and asks for info, right, I'll usually um, have them, uh, you know, contact me on WhatsApp. Then we'll continue our conversation on WhatsApp. Why? So that then the person is in my, you know, they now my contact and I don't lose touch or we don't, you know, I don't lose touch, we stay in contact. And at the same time, they see my status every single day. Yes, Facebook stories as well, you know, but I find WhatsApp stories more effective. You know, personally, this is what works for me. I find WhatsApp stories more effective and it's more personal as well. So, uh, you know, let's say you contact me today and you ask for info, and it's usually more convenient on WhatsApp, like the because I have I have all the info saved up uh, basically on on my WhatsApp, right? So then we are, you now in my contact list, and then uh, you see whatever I post every single day, okay? And then that also tends to remind you that hey, remember we spoke about this, and then uh, that's how. That's how people get reminded and then they obviously join. So this is the other part of, of you know, the importance of following up. I do two types of following up, the active following up and the passive following up. So when you see my stories like on WhatsApp or Facebook and the, you know, the posts that I do here and there on Facebook, you also get reminded because we spoke before, right? We spoke before and you know, passively, how I follow up with you is when you see my my stories, you get reminded all the time that, oh, this CFX, okay, this CFX, you know, I must join this CFX, oh, the CFX, right? And then obviously the active uh, kind of follow up, which is when I contact you to say, hey, um, I sent you, you know, uh, what, like how far are you now with, you know, uh, you know the 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 video the info that uh, the information that you went through like all of that because this it's it's a it's a different approach that you need to take guys like the same thing doesn't work for everyone okay here's my general like, sort of go-to strategy that i use you contact me on facebook or even on whatsapp i send you either the video the the write-up and, and the audio, right? And then we can, you know, then come up to a time to say, okay, uh, we can talk about this uh, later today or later tonight or tomorrow. And then tomorrow I contact you to, 
Now, you know, I'm following up. You know, they say money is in the follow up. So you have to follow up. That's where the money is made. Uh, then I would contact you to say, okay, what did you like best about what you saw? And this is important, you structure it that way. Because most people will usually say, so what do you think? And the moment you say, the moment you ask it that way, like, what do you think of the video? You opening up a lot of excuses and a lot of, you know, people start thinking of objections, okay? But if you ask it in a way that, uh, like, you, you actually channeling that person's way of thinking. If you now ask, so what did you like best about what you saw? You're already pulling them, you know, in a different kind of dimension. So, oh, okay, well, I actually liked the, the, the structure. I actually like the fact that I can end passively without doing anything. I can just buy a package and sit back and they do the trading for me. Oh, I actually like the, comp the compensation plan. You know, you're putting them basically on that level as opposed to uh, just asking them, oh, what do you think? And then you, you, you know, bringing about all kinds of, of excuses. So it also matters now with your follow-up, how you, 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 you word, you know, how you go about with your wording and, and, and how you ask questions. Like I said earlier, you know, there's certain things that you need to say and how you need to say them, okay? And I know, I know like, uh, you know, books will usually tell you, or like when you read up that you will have a specific time to follow up with a person, you must both agree. And, but in reality, it doesn't quite happen that way all the time. So just make sure you diarize it on your side, you know, uh, to say you need to follow up with this person. And then you can make a day, uh, you know, in your busy schedule, make a day for following up with people. Say like Tuesdays, you know, Tuesdays you follow up with, with your people, you know. And uh, the, the main thing that would just be obviously to be consistent with that, which we're gonna cover now shortly as well. So again, there's two types that I do. Remember I'm sharing my experience, you know, other people would do it, uh, you know, differently. My, mine is from Facebook, we continue the, the conversation on WhatsApp, um, or, you know, some people also contact me on WhatsApp as well. And then that's, that's where, you know, I do active follow-up and passive follow-up. So I make sure that the info is in front of my prospect every single time, you know, so that they remember and they, uh, it, you know, it keeps them, because here's the thing, somebody asks you for info, you send it, and then you keep quiet, you don't follow up, you don't, uh, <laughs> then they also want, right? Because remember, we in different, you know, with different mindsets, and some people, it's not as important, or it's not, a, life gets in the way. So that's why you have to follow up. But then there's also effective methods of following up. You don't want to seem desperate, because the moment you seem desperate, then you repel people, you know, and people will tend to not want to join, because it's, you know, it's, it's just, you seem desperate. You don't wanna you don't wanna seem desperate when you do that uh, when you follow up and you don't wanna you don't wanna sound you, you don't wanna make the, the the whole situation awkward okay so you want to be as just human as as possible uh, in your follow ups and do not be desperate because that's what drives people away okay so uh, I can go on and on with that so now when it comes to how to handle rejection okay. Maud, are you back? Yeah, I'm okay. back. Yeah, my you... power is back. So I'm back on Wi-Fi now. We should be we should be having a smoother conversation. So I just want to add quickly, briefly on the issue of follow-ups. Mm. Uh, you covered a lot of things that I wanted to talk about, but what I wanted to say is, in terms of following up, it's very important. If you don't follow up, guess what? All the effort of contacting someone is going to waste. So it's very important. But what I do is when I've got my contacts on WhatsApp, I do active following up, yes, but most of my follow-ups now is passive. How do I do that? Every single week on Saturday when the results, the weekly results are released, I post that on my status. Can you hear me there, Vincent? Yep. Yes. Okay, so I post all those weekly results on my status, on my WhatsApp status. 
And for sure, every Saturday when I post those results, I get at least three people coming to my inbox. Oh, you're still with CashFX. I thought this business was long gone. You know, people are surprised that we are still going. So you need to be consistent. And one thing I want to tell people, this is very important. Don't be that person who is known to share cash effects on your status today. Tomorrow you're sharing another business. Next week you're sharing another business. People will not take you seriously if you are constantly jumping from one platform to the other. Be known for a business. Be known for one business. Look, let's be honest. We all diversify. We all look for other platforms where we can put our money. But you never see me sharing any other business other than cash effects on my status. Why? Because it's important. It's important that you are known to be with a certain business. When someone remembers cash effects, they must remember you. Don't confuse your prospects because today you're talking of cash effects. Tomorrow you're talking of whatever business the following day you're talking of another business you are going to put off a lot of people because they don't know why they should be following you when you're all over the place so professionalism is very important i think that's all i wanted to add on those on the issue of follow-ups so how do you handle rejection mod yeah okay that that's that's an interesting topic that that's what i was waiting for Really, when we say it, we discuss this, I wanted to talk about rejection. Why? Because I've got a few friends, very close friends of mine, my dear sisters who are only deciding to join me in this journey now. And I can see they are struggling with rejection. So I'm going to talk to you about rejection. So when I went to the States and we had all this training, one of the things, main focus that we discussed was the issue of rejection because this is where a lot of people fall out of the business. Guys, one thing you need to know is when you approach people and you share the business with them, when they say no, do not take it personally. A lot of us, we take it very personally. It's like you've been attacked, you've been rejected yourself. No, someone is simply rejecting the idea that you are giving to them. Remember always, not everyone is business-minded. That's one thing we need to remember all the time. Not everyone, we've all got eyes, but not everyone can see. This is a very ambiguous saying, we've all got eyes, but some people cannot even see something, a good opportunity when it slaps them in the face. So when someone says no to you, do not back off and now stop talking to everyone because one person said no to you, don't take it personally. It's not a rejection of you. It's a rejection to the idea that you're passing on to them. So all you need to do is move on to the next person. You know, we used to have this, Vincent, I'm sure you know this SW, SW times four. Yeah. You approach someone, <laughs> no, <laughs> someone says no. So what, you move on to the next person. There's always someone waiting. So when someone says no, this is very important. Move on to the next person. But don't let that no discourage you from talking to everyone that you intended to talk to. That's point number one. Point number two is we all have people that we like. We all have people that we trust. We all have people that we feel we think they trust us. And you, those are the people that you normally approach first. But what happens when those people say no? You keep pushing your idea because you really want your friend to come in. What happens now is you're getting too emotionally attached to a certain individual. I've seen, I used to be this person. Before I got trained, I used to be this person. I would approach someone who I feel is my closest friend. Okay, Valerie is my close friend. So Valerie must support me. And when I approach Valerie and she says, nah, let me think about it. She's not saying no, she's saying she'll think about it. And I go back to her again after three days. And I continue talking to Valerie for two weeks. I'll spend two weeks just talking to Valerie. I'm not looking at anybody else. What is that? You are becoming emotionally attached to one person at the expense of everyone else who's waiting on your list. Because remember, if you're doing this the way I do it, 
you've got a long list of people that are waiting for you to approach, but now you're spending all your time on one person because you cannot separate yourself from this person. Guys, this is a business. It's not a marriage. It's not a relationship where you're emotionally attached to anybody. If someone says they're not interested, let them go. Put them on the side. With me, I put people on a shelf. I put them on the shelf and I come back to you at a later stage. Because again, other people, especially your own market, your relatives. I don't know if you guys struggle with, with your relatives and your closest friends, but those people, because they know where you are coming from, they know your circumstances, they want to see your results first. How many of you have approached people and they say, okay, come back to me with a result. I'll only join when I see that your lifestyle has changed. How many of you are experiencing that? We all go through that. So with me, I always put them on the shelf. And then when I've got something to show, I'll actually go back and show them my results. Then while we are on this rejection issue, you need to know when to give people space. You need to know when to let go. Because yes, in as much as we are big on saying you must make follow-ups, you also need to know when enough is enough, when to just let some people go. Because some people are not meant to be part of this journey. Some, not, some people are not business-minded. Some people are not seeing the opportunity. So don't waste your time on someone who is not seeing the vision move on to the next person and then you come back to them when you've got something real to show. Look, Vincent, I'm sure it's easier for you now to sell this business, especially to people that said no to you before. What is the impact when you go back and you show them your car? What, what is the impact? It's big. Exactly, exactly. So you just need to know how to approach people and you need to know when you need to back off but it's very important that you don't become emotionally attached. I don't know, I'll hand over to you, Vincent. What yeah. do you have to add on that? Yeah, you know, it's, this is, it's actually very important because when they say no, um, you know, like Maud said, usually it's based on their self-limiting beliefs, right? It's not really, usually it's not about you. It's they, you know, they have their own, um, limiting beliefs. Maybe they believe they can be successful. They'll never achieve anything in life. They are, you know, they always fail or they, you know, people have lots of self-limiting beliefs. So, and obviously they won't tell you that it will just come out, you know, you know, from their actions and uh, they'll obviously say, no, 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 this is something, this is a scam or this is, and then you immediately just, you fold and now you think, you know, the business is over. But it's usually their own self-limiting beliefs. Not, it's not about you, <laughs> like Mod said. So it's important like how you go about that. And, uh, and especially when, when people say, okay, what, what has it done for you? Have you made a withdrawal yet? I know that's the most uh, common question. Have you made a withdrawal? What have you earned? What have you, show me what you've, you've done and then I'll join you later. You know, that's uh, also what you covered Mod. It's, uh, it's very common. So with that is you can use, some people are open-minded. Let's also be, let's, you know, some people are genuine. They really want to see, you know, uh, if there's really potential in this business or not. And obviously um, you now have to be creative as well. You know, don't, don't always just like dismiss, right? You can send, uh, for example, uh, you approach your upline because your, up, your upline already has some results. You know, you can just ask your upline to now, you know, help you out with that. Maybe show you, you know, some of his, some of their earnings, etc. Then that's what you can also use. Like third, like uh, um, um, when we talk of your upline, that's when we're bringing in a third person in or a third party, you know, to just help you uh, with the sale. Okay, like you can ask your upline to send you their proof of earnings and withdrawals and say, look, this is what my upline is earning. I just got started here, but uh, this, is what's this is what's possible. And this is what I'm working towards. Believe it or not, some people will see it and they'll, they'll dive in, you know, uh, but, you know, most people don't. Most people just, you know, they'll just dismiss it and say, no, I want to see from you. So that's why you have to use different strategies 
okay, and different approaches. Uh, and this is important in a sense that, I mean, look at, I wanna go into, into the power of consistency mode again, uh, because you know time is, is basically not on our side now. So you share an opportunity with the person now and they you know, tell you all sorts of excuses, right? Again, it's not about you, it's about them. It's their own self-limiting beliefs, okay? And you, you just put them on the side. Again, the SW, 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 which is some will, some want, so what? Okay, uh, but you obviously, you put that on the side, you come back to them at a later stage, you move on to the next person, all right? Now, you do this regularly. This is the power of consistency. You do it regularly, and, you know, because some people that you'll come across, they'll immediately see the vision. When I told Maud about CFX, she didn't waste time. She joined immediately, you know, uh, having obviously worked together for a long time, you know, she knows um, I don't just get into any business. So some will see the vision immediately and some will take time and that's okay. Don't now dismiss everything and dismiss them. And, you know, some take time. You will remember even yourselves here, yeah, you probably didn't join you know the next day when your sponsor told you about cfx right it took you some time so some people have to you know uh make means get used to the idea of you know trusting the the opportunity or you know getting the funds or whatever the case may be so you have to be consistent in this regard because here's what happens a person you spoke to three months ago and you kept following up, you know, passively and actively. Now today they make a decision and they decide to join the, the business today. Uh, and then, you know, tomorrow, somebody you spoke to, you know, six or two weeks ago, they join you tomorrow and then the next day and then the next day. So it looks like people are joining you instantly, but they're not. This is the work you did six months ago. And then because you've been consistent, consistently talking to people, consistently showing them CFX, again, Maud spoke about, you know, focus and focusing on one thing. You've been consistently showing CFX, you know, uh, to them uh, when, you know, when they think of CFX, they think of you, right? And then later on, they join you. So because you do that every day, even when they come joining you, it's like, it's like you're getting sales, you know, like regularly, but it's not to say you spoke to this person today. They just decided to join today, but you spoke to this person two months ago and the next person that joins tomorrow. So it ends up like overlapping, you know, then that's when you actually get regular signups. But again, it's the work you did before. Now it's just paying off. But if you're not consistent, you're not going to see such results. And also, if you're not focused, you're not going to see such results. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. There's a ton of opportunities out there, right? There's a ton of opportunities out there. But I can tell you one thing. In order for any opportunity to work, you have to do the work. I don't care how good it sounds, how much the, you know, the upline or the, another top leader has made, all of that. If you're not willing to do the work, then uh, you will not succeed. That's, that's just how it is, okay? So with CFX, the way I view it, okay, is look, the system itself, is it trustworthy? Yes. Uh, do we have the transparency here? And do we know the CEO? Do we know exactly uh, what they're doing? Are they really trading? Are they, you know, delivering on their promises? Are they, yes, you know, the answer is yes to those things. Um, that's the system, right? So that's basically what I've been looking for. That's what Maud has been looking for. Cause on this, uh, this like in this in this space or in this industry, there's lots of scams that uh, I know a lot of people here will know this. There's lots of scams, lots of, you know, uh, yeah, like just lots of scams. So with CFX, it's what I've been looking for and it ticks all the boxes. So that's the system. Now, the next part is you. What do you do about the, the opportunity? So that's why I do not look sideways, especially now when it comes to building a business here. CFX has, has everything, basically, that I've been looking for. So there's no need for me to look sideways. And, you know, some people will say, oh, oh, it's low. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. 
So here's, here's what I do and what I usually tell people, right? In order, it, like, instead of you jumping around from one platform to the next, you know, looking for the next shiny object and, and looking to, you know, suddenly uh, become an overnight success, take what's in front of you, make sure it's a solid foundation and that is CFX, it's solid, right? And then you build it. And by building, it's different pace. Like Maud said, her pace is not the same as mine. Mine is not the same as my uplines. Like whatever the case may be, you build it. And then over time, it will, you know, it adds up and it will actually pay you now, you know, a very decent amount, but it's through your consistency. It's through your actions that you do every single day. And then you grow your business. Here's an example. And here's what I usually see. Somebody joins CFX now and they don't, they don't make enough, but they don't make a lot of money according to, 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 you know, whatever the expectations, right? And then they leave CFX to join a shiny object uh, thinking they want to make a lot there, right? Instead of working on CFX. And then you find three months down the line or even six months down the line, if it, if it lived up, uh, you know, if it stayed around for that long, it's gone. That opportunity is gone. Now they back at, you know, back uh, now stage one, back from scratch. Now they have to start looking for something else again. So what happens is you just keep hopping from one opportunity to the next, to the next, losing money in the process. I, I see this all the time. You leave what you're doing, you leave CFX to go to another platform that promises you riches overnight, right? And then three months down the line, you broke, you lost your money. You're looking for another opportunity. The same thing. And that's why, you know, then people end up losing a lot and then they blame the industry when it's actually you. You have to just, when Maud shows you her earnings, right? You'll be surprised and think, oh, oh, this is awesome. Well, and then you think it happened overnight. When I show you my earnings, you think it happened overnight, but it didn't. It took time. Okay, it took time for me to get there. I built it consistently. So I basically laid a firm foundation and then built from there. What's the foundation? It's CFX, that's your solid foundation. Then you build from there. Now you suddenly have an empire and you're earning, you know, decent and you're helping a lot of people. And then it's like it happened overnight. So uh, before I hand over to Maud, what I'd like you guys to do is just have a have a long-term mindset, a long-term kind of, you know, uh, vision that build, you know, just build, don't, don't go for instant gratification. I know when I started out online myself, you see an opportunity that promises you, uh, you know, 100% in two weeks or 70%. Uh, you remember more. Do you remember those? Do you remember when we were starting out? Yes. <laughs> Look, guys, yes like, please don't remind me. That's a nightmare. <laughs> we have been there. I mean, and not just me and Mort. Most of you on the call, we've been there. You do something, uh, they tell you in 48 hours, you, you receive 50%. Oh, oh, wow, that's awesome. Yes, you'll get paid maybe twice or thrice, okay? Then you invite your friends. <laughs> and then they close the doors on you. Right now you're back, you know, back, uh, back on, on, you know, uh, the basement. Now you have to now again uh, look into growing again. And then you just keep hopping from one to the next. So do not have the instant gratification mentality. Just treat this as a business and it will pay you as such. If you just want overnight riches, then CFX is not for you. That's, that's basically that. Uh, so just focus on being consistent. Then over time, it's like small actions every day. Over time, it adds up. And now you have this empire that, you know, uh, you're benefiting, that's actually like, uh, you know, paying you a lot, but it takes time. Maud, what, what do you want to say about that? Uh... Um, yeah, the, this is a very interesting subject and I'm going to get a little bit personal. So Maud. Maud Desta. Okay, I think, 
I think we lost Maud again. Maud. As today, forget it. You need to actually literally work on the business every single day. So this is what I did in order to grow a big business. Initially for the first three to six months, I was approaching new people every single day. I would make it a point that I'm talking to people every day, but then you get to a point where you need to stop and identify the leaders in your team. The leaders will always come out, guys. You don't even need to look for them. The people who are active in the, on the groups, those are your leaders. The people who are coming to you often with questions, those are your leaders. Groom those people, shape those people, train those people, because you don't want to do all the work by yourself. You want to have other leaders who share your passion as part of your team. So you grow your people, they grow their own people. It goes like that. So you need to just be consistent with that. A lot of people, we self-sabotage. What do I mean by that? I've got quite a few people in the system who became executives, who became managers, but because they did not remain consistent, right now they've fallen from being a manager. They are not even executives as we speak. I'm talking of people who were paid 7,500 for attaining that rank, but because they could not remain consistent, they have fallen so far back, they are not even executive anymore. You know, I, I found it quite disappointing because look, this is an amazing business. Guys, this is an amazing business, but you cannot expect to continue growing. Yes, you are going to have times when, when business is a little bit quiet, when you have run out of people to talk to, but when you find that you've run out of people to talk to, go back to your team leaders, offer to help them with their people, share your own results as a leader and say, listen, if you are struggling with getting people, here are my results. Put me in touch with a few people that you feel have got potential. Let me talk to them on your behalf. That is being consistent and that is taking initiative as a leader. As a leader, you must never allow your team to crumble completely while you are there. And also another thing that's really important is the power of positive thinking. I cannot stress this enough. If you are someone who's always negative, the minute things go wrong, you are immediately going to go flat. You need to feed your brain because it all starts here. It all starts here. So this is what Vincent was also talking about. Invest in good books. Invest in books that continue to motivate you, that make you grow, that continue to keep you in that right frame of mind. One book that comes to mind is a PT someone borrowed it last week, The Power of Positive Thinking. There's actually a book which is The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale, P-E-A-L-E. -E. That's, that's an amazing book. It's a very good book. If you can get hold of that book, because for me, when I feel like things are not really going the way I wanted them, things are slowing down. When I go to that book and I read, what does it do? It builds you up. It makes you think of your belief level. Your belief level in automatically goes up. And you know that, you know what, this is just a phase. This is just a season that I'm going through. But you don't give up completely. I see so many people in the system close to giving up right now. I know I've got two downlines who allowed their packages to expire. And they took that money, they put it somewhere else, and that other thing that they put their money in is crashed. I won't mention names. Now they are coming back to me. They want to get started again. Imagine these are people that I started off with in 2019. Weird packages, but because they were not consistent, they were not focused, they are constantly looking for the next big thing. They took money from CashFX. They put that money on another program. That program, the owner is disappeared, gone with the wind. Now they want to come back to cash FX. Do you see that is self-sabotage? You, you have no one to blame except yourself. The business is working, but you expected to get rich too quickly. Why is it that we are content to apply for a job and to get someone telling us what they think we are worth and to give us a salary and you earn that salary for 40 years until you retire at 65, 
but you're not willing to put two years of everything that you have into cash FX into making it work, but you're very happy making somebody else rich, reporting for work as an employee, working for somebody until you're 65 and you probably retire broke anyway. You know, it's, it's a topic that I get very emotional about because I saw my father doing it. My father worked until he was old. And I kept saying, when are you going to leave? But he couldn't leave because we we're still going into school. He still needed to support us. He had no backup plan. And by the time he left work, guess what? You are too old. You can't even enjoy your life anymore. All your dreams have died along, along with time. You can't do anything at all anymore. Guys, I want to close this by saying focus. That, that's the only thing that I can say to you. I can help you in any other way. I can talk to your people. I can talk to your prospects. But if you do not have the right mindset, I'm wasting my time. If you yourself are not focused on your business, I'm wasting my time talking to your prospects. If you are constantly looking for the next shiny object online, I'm wasting my time. Vincent and I are wasting our time. Just focus on cash effects. You are not going to get rich overnight. This is not one of those get rich quick schemes. This is a real legitimate business that needs you to just focus, remain consistent, keep working at it, but you will see the results. Later on, you will see the results. So I don't think I can add on to that. I think I've said everything that I needed to say. You now need to just take time and reflect because the year is just getting started. How you start the year and how you end this year should not be the same, guys. If you see where you are today and you look back in December and you think that you are still in that same position, there's something that you are doing wrong. It's got nothing to do with the business that you're involved with. It's got nothing to do with cash effects. It's you. If you are not moving, it is your fault. It is you. So today, after this call, I just want to urge you all, take a moment, take an hour, put your phone aside. Just think about what you want to achieve this year. What do you want to achieve for yourself this year? What do you want to achieve for your team this year? How are you going to do about it? Start planning from today. We are just getting started, guys. Today is what? Today is the 16th of January, if I'm correct. Yes. We are just getting started. Make those plans now and stick to them. Don't look, there's a lot of things that are coming online right now. There is so much you get confused if you even follow those things. Just sit down and say, this is what I have. Cash effects is what I have. What can I do to grow my package from where I am to 100K? Guys, we are not talking of things that you have not seen. We have seen Vincent doing it. Vincent has got 200K packages. It can be done. It is possible. It's all about your mindset. I think I'll close there. No, thanks. Thanks, um, uh, thanks Mark. That was really, yeah, that was powerful. That was powerful. You know, some of the things that really make me you know um really to be more more grateful for cfx and why i really uh you know appreciate this business is the power and the ability to help other people you know i love it when i receive such messages um another friend uh, slash business partner uh, you know whilst we were talking he sent me this message he says bro i don't know how much i can thank you you have helped me a lot with CFX. Uh, thank you, bro. So, you know, these are such messages that I, you know, they make me feel good. Like, because CFX really is helping a lot of people. It's making a difference in a lot of people's lives, you know, including myself and more, right? So when I receive such mes messages, I honestly really, you know, uh, I get overwhelmed and, and it's quite a few that I receive, right? Um, so, this is again, you just have to make that decision. So the, just the one thing before I close the call off um, that I actually feel I need to touch on is we have been talking about focus and we've been talking about consistency, right? Here's the thing, something that you might not know. Um, remember I said something about uh, 
my passive kind of follow up where you know people will like see what i do like some of my whatsapp stories and stuff so the thing is you talk to someone now right and then uh then over time you obviously follow up with them but now if you do that consistently right and now the other thing is there are people that are watching you that you do not you, you don't know they are I've received messages myself, uh, you know, people would go, look, I've been watching you for like six months. I love the consistency. Uh, there really must be something uh, to the CFX, you know, just tell me more about it again. And then they sign up. But that is, you know, from my being consistent and whether you know it or not, like some people are watching you. They just want to see how consistent you are, whether this is one of those opportunities, you promote this today and tomorrow it's something else. Obviously, they don't want to be abandoned by their sponsors. So nobody wants to join a person who's not focused. That you should know. If you're not focused, like really, nobody wants to join people who are not focused. So um, you have to just focus and be consistent and, and you know, results will come, okay? So, I want to close with this. Look, you have to, you know, something about energy that I spoke about also earlier. If you are not confident in the business and if you don't believe that CFX is the vehicle to take you, you know, to get you to where you, you, you need to be, uh, it will show. So start with yourself, you know, and like really, if you're not confident in the business, just find out why, and then you get to the bottom of that. Because that will show when you introduce the business to other people that, I mean, how do you expect me to join you if you yourself are not 100% regarding this business? I mean, if you don't trust the business and you don't have the confidence in the product or in the services, in the business, how do you expect another person to be confident in the business and you can try to hide it as much as you can uh, but you can't hide it it shows so again it goes back to you really doing you know an introspection and if if there's certain things you don't understand about the business you ask uh, I mean obviously this call is mainly based on you know sharing the opportunity right so you want to learn as much as you can about CFX so that when you, um, you know, when, when people uh, give you, when, when you, you meet rejections or, or people just ask you, you know, certain questions, or whatever, you are able to answer them. So if you don't know much about the business, your recruiting will not be as effective. So you need to learn, um, you know, learn the business. You know, if you don't understand, you ask, ask your upline. If your upline doesn't know, Modesta is there, I'm there, you know, uh, like I said, I mean, I, I literally, you know, help. Uh, I, don't, I don't care whose team you're on. I, I just help uh, as many people as I can. So learn the business, understand it, because what I find, and I'm sure, Maud, you've also experienced this. What I find is people are easy to dismiss the, the business. Like you said also earlier, people will like rush to join, but they don't really understand how the business works, which is, again, don't confuse the taking action and then understanding as you go and you having the insight now of the business. Obviously you take action and you learn as you go. But now if you will be looking to now share the opportunity, take it out there, obviously you will meet some, you know, you know there'll be questions and you have to know what it is you're talking about. And again, that goes to now the confidence and the understanding of the business. So just make sure that uh, you, you, you know, that you sort it out in that regard. And you don't, again, you don't have to know every single thing. You will, you will know as you go, okay? But just make sure you under, just make sure you understand. You'll meet somebody and they'll ask you, okay, who's, where, where is the, a simple question, where is the business located? You don't know, okay? Uh, if you don't know, you go ask your upline. Now you know, so that the next person, if somebody asks you next time, now you know where the business is located. So the more you do that, the more questions you get, the more understanding you, you get, and the more, you know, you just have to entertain the business. Uh, that will then lead to, you know, better understanding. Because here's the thing, with you understanding better, like how the business works, that's what will take you to the next level. 
okay you this is not it's not automatic guys we didn't get here just because we decided and then we went to the business i didn't understand the business completely when i started i had to learn as i went and also also as i talked to people they asked me certain questions that i do not know then i go find out now i know and um the other thing too is i know we've gone on for for very long i'm going to close the call uh, shortly the other thing uh, is don't don't lie you know don't don't inflate things um Maud, could you just um, mute Peter? Then? Do not inflate things. And I understand you want to grow your business and you want to make a sale, right? Uh, but it goes beyond that. Because if you're going to lie about the business or about the returns and somebody gets the opposite of what you promised, then that's when you get in trouble and the person is unhappy and the person is, you know, then they want to leave and then they, because they expect the, the, the company hasn't met the expectations, which you inflated. So don't, don't rush to like making a sale and stuff. Just, you know, if, if a person is looking for a get rich quick scheme, then CFX is not for them. So be okay with letting go uh, because if you over promise and you under deliver, then you're going to end up with people that are unhappy, members that are, uh, you know, very upset, and you're probably going to ruin that relationship. So you don't want to do that. Just, you know, be as genuine as possible, be honest, you know, and also don't guarantee returns. I mean, you've, you've seen, uh, you know, the earnings fluctuate. It's because this is a real legit business. And in the real business, especially in the trading world, like, earnings fluctuate no trading days are the same right so you want to also give that kind of you know perspective and really you know tell your prospects like the way things are and they'll they'll still join you if they're really looking to change the the you know the the finances they will still join you if not that's still okay they'll join you later <laughs> you know so uh, i just wanted to to emphasize that and you know i i prefer under promising and over delivering. Because then if a person is expecting this kind of amount and then they receive more, then they're happy. But if they're expecting this amount and they receive less, then it's like you lied to them and this and that, right? So just make sure that how you go about your business is how you would like uh, to be, um, you know, presented uh, as well uh, you know the, the the opportunity look we're not really entertaining questions as such um yeah true we need yeah. to actually close the we meeting shame we get people oh. for two hours so daisy's just yeah even miriam that uh, now you know came in uh, whilst we're not uh, whilst you're offline mode it's it it wasn't really uh, good i should say because this call is we're not we're just talking, uh, you know, encouraging and motivating people. So uh, that's it's not really professional that way, but but that's okay. Uh, if that is it, may so. Just in closing, we've still got the groups. If anyone has uh, got a question, they should come on the group now. We are all yeah. online. Post your question on the group. We are there to support you. But mm -hmm. when we call for a training like this one, and we say this is the set agenda, we yeah. want to just stick to that particular agenda. Yes, uh, we've already kept you guys uh, for, for long. So that is it yeah. for the call, everybody. Go back, you know, introspect, really just like make a decision and just like, you know, introspect really what it is that you want from life and from CFX particularly, okay? And then you find that you come up with different uh, and creative answers to make this work. Okay, that's it for the call uh, today, basically. And uh, thanks everybody for attending. And, uh, you know, I hope that between Modesta and myself, what we've been sharing with you, you've resonated with either one of us and you will now go back and, you know, uh, try these different strategies that we spoke of. And uh, yeah, you make a success of this opportunity uh, that we have in front of us. Okay, so until the next call, have a great one, everyone. And uh, same to you. you thank you, thank you, thank you. So, thank you all. Right, and I, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And Modesta, thank you very yeah. much for the teaching. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. <laughs>
Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>